welcome back to my channel, The Masked Mormon. I am, in fact, The Masked Mormon. Were you wearing a mask? Were you burned by acid or something like that? Oh no, it's just they're terribly comfortable. I think everyone will be wearing them in the future. So this video is a little bit different and it's probably gonna be a little bit shorter. Um, but in these last couple videos, I've been talking about coffee. It's background, it's pharmacology, how to make it, how to interpret it, all that kind of stuff. And personally, I love coffee. It is a great, wonderful thing. However, uh, I know some people might uh, get to a point where maybe they start overusing it or it becomes one of those things where it ends up not being a net benefit in their life and they decide, hey, I think I've probably had enough coffee. They might feel that they uh, are addicted to it or have some dependence on it. And so this video uh, is just a little bit about uh, if you, know, you so decide to, how to quit coffee. I know in the last videos I've talked about coffee as, you know, it's a wonderful thing, it's great, it's fantastic, uh, but I know for some people it can be something that they just don't want in their lives anymore. And um, to just try to be uh, as balanced as possible, you know, talking about the pharmacology and the benefits and the how-tos of coffee, um, how to talk about, you know, hey, I'm done with this, I, I've tried it, I've I've had enough, uh, but I'm also having a bad experience as I'm trying to quit coffee. This video is just kind of for that. So hopefully these principles can be helpful for you uh, if uh, you decide that there's any other substance in your life, whether it's uh, coffee or alcohol or sugar, whatever the case may be, um, ways to help excise certain things from your life. Uh, that you're kind of determining that you don't need anymore. So coffee is a substance that has a very low bar as far as risks. Um, it should be very easy to practice if you decide that coffee is something to cut out of your life, um, but you're finding that you are having a little bit of a hard time to do that. So let's get into it. Probably the first and easiest as far as conceptual ways to think about quitting coffee is just to stop. Um, you know, one morning you decide, I've had enough of this, no more, um, I'm drinking it too much, or whatever, so you decide to stop, the cold turkey method, um, and then over the next few days, you probably find that uh, you have headaches, you're kind of uh, tired, you're kind of grumpy, uh, and it just, life kind of sucks for a couple of days, and if you can muscle through that, Within about a week, you'll be uh, you'll be back to normal. Sometimes that can be a little bit more difficult than somebody might want to um, might want to deal with, and so um, they'll find that they end up going back to it because uh, they just don't like the withdrawal effects. One of the things that coffee can do is it can kind of deplete um, a neurotransmitter called phenylalanine uh, in your body. And so probably one of the easiest ways to uh, quit caffeine is to, as you cut out the caffeine, is to supplement with something called phenylalanine. Uh, you can buy it uh, on Amazon or at the store or whatever, and within about a week, you'll be done with caffeine. So you start by taking uh, two, cap uh, two capsules in the morning, uh, that's about 1,000 milligrams, and then another two capsules in the, uh, in the afternoon. The next day, you take two capsules in the morning and then one capsule in the afternoon. The next day, two capsules in the morning and nothing in the afternoon, and you just kind of uh, work your way uh, down to fewer capsules. And within five days, um, you should hopefully have uh, had very few, if any, of the effects of withdrawal, which again are mostly headaches, uh, maybe feeling tired, uh, maybe feeling a little irritable, um, and just kind of feeling blah for a few days, um, but hopefully that should help uh, quite a bit. Um, other ways are finding something to replace it with. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be caffeine, but uh, you can switch it out with uh, something like tea. Uh, it doesn't have to be caffeinated tea, uh, especially if you're trying to work off caffeine, um, but there are different uncaffeinated beverages. I would say avoid things like soda, because uh, honestly, um, you don't go from a something that's fairly good to drink for you to something that is, you know, has absolutely no value. Um, 
but find something to replace it with. Uh, you might be a little bit dehydrated, so drink more water. Uh, find uh, some herbal teas that you might enjoy. Uh, just replace it with something because, again, coffee is a social drink and it's helpful to drink it with other people to help bring you closer together. So if you find something to replace it with, you can still keep that social component uh, and still uh, enjoy their company. Um, and then uh, the last thing is uh, just give it some time. Um, caffeine is one of those things, again, with low bar of risk, uh, a couple days of discomfort as you try to quit it. It's not going to kill you. It's not going to um, cause any uh, ill effects as you come off it. So just give it some time. And within a couple days, uh, your body will be back to its baseline. Uh, and uh, as more time goes on, uh, your resistance to caffeine will kind of uh, lessen. And so if you decide to uh, start going back to coffee, um, you'll find that uh, you get the same kick with even less. In my life, actually, um, I do enjoy coffee, I love it, um, but I will take a week or two uh, occasionally and just stop drinking coffee. Uh, mostly to reset my tolerance because I, uh, you know, the more, co the more caffeine you drink, uh, the more tolerant your body gets. And so I like to reset that occasionally. So I'll take a week or two where I'll drink no coffee or I'll just drink something like green tea, something that has lower ca caffeine content in it. Um, and uh, it's kind of nice just to take it out a little bit and then add it back in. Um, that way it's something that I find is a net benefit in my life and uh, I don't really have to uh, depend on it if I don't uh, have access to it. So uh, like with any substance, it's good to uh, cycle in and off of it. Um, I do that uh, with some of my uh, other supplements that I take. Uh, uh, I'll use them for a while and then I'll stop using for a while. Uh, just to kind of let my body readjust. So it's good for any substance. Um, and then as I come back to it, uh, the first cup of coffee I'll have after uh, cycling off for a little bit, uh, I get that rush uh, almost like it's the first time again. Uh, and so it's kind of nice to reset. That way you kind of can re-experience a first cup of coffee uh, again. Um, and it is a very um, pleasant experience. Um, but then you also start to realize how fast your body adapts. You kind of can start to read your body, uh, and then uh, if it starts being something that you feel that you have to have, you kind of come off for a little bit, uh, use your phenylalanine or water, or whatever, whatever method uh, is helpful, and, um, and then just start back up again. So that's all I had to say about that. Um, if you had any questions, uh, let me know in the comments. Hopefully this was useful. So if you like that, uh, please uh, leave a comment, uh, press that like button, subscribe, consider sharing this with other people, and I'll see you again.